Hello, beautiful people. Today is not exactly a regular unboxing, nor is it a regular mini palette. Although there is footage of a mini haul just under two years ago, this is also the mini haul that gave rise to my current but sustained obsession with Cobalt Violet by Core that will take some of my attention in 2024 as I try to source a more satisfying replacement for that pigment. But I digress. Let's jump back to March 2022 when Jackson's had specials on watercolors. They have specials all the time. You just have to be a little patient and ready to jump when they circle back. And they're dangerous because they're so tempting. Again, let's go back to the subject at hand. As I was preparing to get a replacement tube for my almost finished transparent iron oxide brown and getting a few more colors from Core because that's who I am, including the soon to be elusive but alluring cobalt violet, on a whim, I got a Lutea paint in Pink Matter Lake, Rose Lac de Garance. I say on a whim, but since first getting Rhodonite Genuine from Daniel Smith 2016, I've had a weakness for soft bright pinks with poor light fastness. I've resisted getting any more Lutea colors since then, mostly because after swatching the color I put this one aside because I know it's not light fast and there's always this element of danger with getting enamored with a pigment you can't easily and cheaply get and that will happily leave you when the bright light of day takes over. All of this to say, I put this color aside not quite knowing when and how to use it. Glad I had it, but ambivalent about what exactly I wanted to do with it. Sometimes you just have to satisfy the curious cat in yourself and hope your little creative brain can one day pull on those long forgotten threads and find that abandoned ball of yarn covered in dust bunnies as it becomes the lifeline out of a labyrinth of your own making. I really should redo my Ariadne video. I feel like I would have much more to say than I did a few years back. On another side note, if you like straightforward videos and narrations, I recommend anyone else but me. I've decided to steer into every single curve and take every tangent to ramble, just ramble. It eventually gets me somewhere, although it's not always there there, it's always somewhere. So, last month, as I was collecting a bunch of cobalt violets and the two random core paints in Titan Buff and Olive Green, I remembered my last time putting together a mini palette by Core. But my mind got stuck on that forgotten Lutea color. Memory is a very tricky thing. Lutea was an afterthought that would only pop back up when I looked into my jar of paints as it floated on top of some core tubes before I moved it on top of another jar that had Isaro colors, then that I put in a drawer next to other random paints. Always untouched, always a mystery, and always accompanied by this quiet sense of failure. What can I do with it? <sighs> The longer you ignore a problem, the less likely you are to fixing it. And this paint felt like a self-indulgence, I take it a little too far. I don't much like feeling a sense of failure and I don't like feeling like I lack control. Thankfully, I can also be really good at random rationalization and art does give me the ability and the excuse of making shit up if I want to. <laughs> Would the two new cork paints with the Lutea color make for an interesting trio? Hmm. And what if the colors played well together? Maybe a fourth could be added for a quad, a fifth for a quintet, a sixth for a sextet, a soft, nostalgic palette, just fresh enough not to smell like mothballs, but a good memory. Put it. Memory. Again, about memory. Ariane was abandoned on an island because Theseus forgot about her. He also forgot to change the black mourning sails to white upon his return to Athens, and he got his father killed. That was the end of the story for 
Aegeus as he jumped to his death because he thought his son has died. But Ariadne, oh, oh, that's different. Ariadne, on the other hand, ended up marrying a god. Dionysus may have been the god of wine and madness, but he was also one of the few gods that remained faithful to their spouse, and he loved Ariadne. We know so little about her, but I'd like to think she lived her best life after having been forgotten and abandoned by Theseus. Could I give a second chance to Pink Matter Lake after close to two years of it collecting metaphorical and literal dust? Or would I remain Theseus, the forgetful dumbass who slaughtered the poor Minotaur? I have issues, unresolved feelings, for dumbass forgetful heroes who stumble into situations and seem to get everyone else to find a fix to their problems. But enough about Greek hero privilege. Long live the Minotaur. Yes, I also cheer for the big bad wolf because it was hungry and it is in his nature. And Little Red really should have listened to her mother. She was dumb enough not to make sense of what was right in front of her. Yes, what great teeth indeed, Red. Just gloss over it and jump into his mouth. Let's get back to the video. I've made myself a few mini palettes throughout the years, and my next video will be about the mini palette that started my cobalt violet, my core obsession. But today, it is about a mini palette en devenir, in the making, so to speak. I need to add a fourth, fifth, sixth color I'm thinking about a blue or possibly a granulating black, but to decide, I thought it best to play with the limited trio to see what it could do. Every time I make a mini palette, I'm not necessarily looking for a balanced mixing chroma set. In fact, their very limiting nature is what most attracts me to using a mini set. It forces me to be creative in my approach to focus on values and contrasts between cool and warm and not on actual hues. It forces me to play with the properties of the paints. Are they granulating, semi-opaque? Can I force more texture or layer them to get an interesting result? Because such unbalanced palettes are limiting, one of the first things I do after swatching them is in fact a color wheel. This is particularly useful with a simple trio, and in this case, the Titan buff steps in for the yellow, the olive green is the closest thing to a blue, and the pink matter lake becomes my magenta. It's interesting seeing colors in a color wheel when you don't have any of the real primaries. I don't have much experience with buff titanium. It's never made it into any of my plein air palettes in part due to how unignorable it is. If used too thickly, it's like using gouache in a way. If you're not careful, it will muddy the other colors and all transparency becomes a thing of the past. It always struck me as a very cool color next to a true yellow, but as it takes over the role of yellow in this color wheel, I can finally see how buttery it can be. It can be a warm sandy beach at the end of a wave. And I like how clear and pristine the color is in this core formulation. Olive green feels like chrome oxide green's second cousin who would love to take a nap on that warm beach to sleep one off after a full night of drinking too much wine and discussing Kierkegaard. It's made of three pigments, transparent red iron oxide, bismuth vanadate from which it gets its opacity, and phthalo green blue shade. I like the color, though I foresee myself struggling with laying it on too thickly. Finally, in contrast, Pink Matter Lake is transparent, delicate, and easily overwhelmed by the other two. It's not entirely unassuming. It leans warmer with a slight orange tinge, as if it had laid the entire day in the sun and gotten a little burned. When Ariane woke up alone on the beach, did she tan? Did she blush, ashamed or embarrassed, realizing she had forsaken king and country for someone who didn't stick around? Did she cry? Did she rage? Cut off from home, did she crumble like a stringless puppet? 
No one tells us. We're just told Dionysus was enamored and took her as his wife. She gave Theseus the ball of string that saved him from the maze, but her story cuts short, abruptly, barely a note in someone else's story. For now, as I tried the colors in an exercise where I paint quick little leaves, I learn more about how the paints flow and layer, whether the normally explosive core formulation takes over. I let the pigments float in puddles, enjoying the mindlessness of mark making. Some people jump immediately into painting subjects. I often need that meditative space that lets me hover before sinking my teeth into something more tangible. I'm a stream of consciousness kind of girl, if you couldn't tell. Again, I digress. This video is about trying three new colors, though one is not quite so new. But new is all about perspective. I've had it quite a while, but it's still new to me. This video is also about redemption. Me redeeming myself in my own eyes because I decided to try something out of curiosity a few years ago. And there are self-righteous creatures out there on the internet who like to criticize you for spending what they deem to be insane amount of money for paints. The same way I criticize Red for her naivete, forgetting she's but a child and what I perceive as naivete is just a child's innocence in a world of dark, hungry animals. It's a mad world out there. And sometimes we just want to see beauty. Beauty is all around. Beauty is right in front of you. This desaturated tree reminded me of the leaves of a plant that has been at home on my desk for the last three years. But not just any leaves, but the dying leaves as they get damaged and start yellowing as they wilt before I cut them off. If you've ever seen some of my older videos, you might know I have a thing for wilting botanicals. And this trio just became the answer for one of my subjects. I still need to figure out what the fourth pigment, fourth, fifth, sixth, whichever, will be, but that will be at a later date. As I quickly sketch the leaves, I realize I can simply set them on my paper and paint them life-size. As they are placed on the paper, so shall the composition be. As they are perceived by my eye, so will they be put in perspective. It's the easiest one-to-one -one translation for a composition. This is what I've done mostly when I do plein air, and I do botanicals at the botanical garden. Most were painted at a one-to-one -one ratio, with me getting as close to the flowers as possible in exactly the same angle I want to draw them. I've done five or so years of painting from life challenges. Every year I work hard on improving my observation skills, but this is the first year I realized just how important it is to place everything the correct way and light everything the way you want it. So you don't need to improvise as much because what you see is what you end up painting and everything is the way you like it. I am still in a phase where I need a reference to draw and paint something I like. Visualizing and representing imaginary elements is not yet part of my wheelhouse. I've painted this plant before in watercolors and pastels. It was quick and expressive, layered and full. This time around it's more detailed but simple, more realistic and unassuming. Both times it was about the pink in the leaves. How to let the color appear naturally without a strong pattern. How to make marks at random but purposefully. That's what's the most difficult about this painting. Our brain has a tendency to organize things. Now, let's pretend you're outside and you're painting a cluster of trees. This is an exercise you probably should do. Go outside and paint a cluster of trees. Before painting it, observe it for maybe five minutes. For five minutes, all you do is observe. You observe the space between the trees, how tall the trees are, their shape, the shade, the branches, 
the relationship between them. Then for five minutes, you sketch them quickly just to place them on your paper. After those five minutes are done, you can go out and do something else. Spend 15 to 20 minutes doing something else entirely. Then you need to paint those trees that you just did by memory. You have a minute, no more. What will happen? Likelihood is you will organize them a little differently. If the space between the trees was random, all of a sudden it's a little more even. Why does that happen? I've seen it happen and I've seen it done. We create order. It's the way our brain works. But nature, though it does follow patterns, never follows them so perfectly that it's unnatural and mechanical. It always seems like an approximation. That's what attracts us to handmade things. That small stitching that went wrong. That uneven texture of the paper. The greediness of a paint. Some see it as a delusional romanticized perspective. Some as a moment of beauty. They may both be right, they may both be wrong, but until you are both the one forgotten on the beach and the one forgetting a loved one asleep on the sand, it is difficult to say whether the story will have a happy ending or not. In Theseus' story, Ariadne is forgotten. Some say he searched for her. Some say he simply didn't realize she was gone until it was too late. He ended up marrying her little sister Phaedra sometime down the road, I think it was the second wife, and that didn't turn out so well. But in Ariadne's untold story, some say she was brought to Olympus by Dionysus and was deified. Which is not a bad ending for a girl who betrayed her father, her own people, for a hero who deserted her after she outlived her use. Okay, let's get back to the painting at hand. As you can see, the buff titanium works well with the yellowing of the leaves. The pink matter lake is the perfect contrasting pink in this wilting but beautiful plant. Now, though the green and a healthy leaf should be brighter, a little more yellow, this olive green is still a good hue for a less lively leaf cut off from the plant as it settles into its decay. It also has a great range in value, giving me some very easy darks. The three colors make for beautiful mud as the rut slowly takes over the healthy green and pink. One of the hardest things when collecting art materials is a fast infatuation with a pigment that may not be good for you. Whether difficult to source, discontinued, overseas, price prohibitive, or made of some toxic material you prefer not to delve into, there may be a myriad of reasons, but the siren is out there, calling. non life fast soft pinks are one of my Achilles heels. It started with Rodonite Genuine and the affair lives on with this pink matter lake. I admit, even after leaving it abandoned, it haunted me and what you may not realize is just how many times I had to squeeze this precious tube to be able to continue painting with it. It is so low tinting. And again, I questioned the idea of making a palette with it. Maybe I should put it aside, keep it hidden, until I find another subject that would take advantage of how very natural and soft this paint is. It is so transparent that you can easily layer it with itself from the softest baby pink to the deepest sunburnt blush. The more I think of it, the more possessive I become, imagining myself jealous in the future of a past self that indulged with this color. Ugh. Listen, when you start waxing poetic and start convoluting present and past times, it's probably time to move on. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I admit I waxed poetic about my own forgetfulness throughout the video, strongly almost inferring divine inspiration when it was just a moment of connecting two similar experiences that were separated by time my unboxing almost two years ago and the one I did a little bit under two months ago. It basically gave me an excuse to 
play with paints. Although part of me is still thinking maybe I should put this pink matter lake aside. I'm still debating. Tell me, have you ever loved something so much that you were scared of not having enough of it? You saw in my last one how many cobalt violets I got because I love it and in the future I want to have it. And because it's low tinting, I will need to use a lot of it. Um, is there something you are... What is your Achilles heel? What is one of your little weaknesses? Is it a paint, a paper, a brush? Is it um, anything in particular that is either difficult to do, or if you do it, it's so difficult to get your hands on, um, but it's worth the effort. Um, it could be when I go plein air painting, this is the spot I really like, but it's so difficult to get there. It takes me two hours to walk all the way there. Or it's at this time of day and it's only for like half an hour and this is the only time that I can actually paint this. Or it's once a year, there's this flower that blooms. Or there's this one bird that comes and feeds, but he only does it in the winter time when it's a blizzard outside, which would be insane, but maybe it's a crazy bird. Tell me. I want to know one of yours. All right. I hope you enjoyed. It was a long one. If you're here still now, you're awesome. And I want you to take care. Happy New Year. Take care. Ciao.